So Vagrant is a tool that allows you to run uh, the same operating system in development as you will use in production using a virtual machine. So you might be running Mac, Linux, or Windows, and you can actually run Linux inside of any of those, the same version of Linux that you'll be running on the server. So that means that in development, you can know that your code that runs there will also run perfectly in production. So we're gonna talk about um, how to set Vagrant up and uh, configure that. Now real quick before we get started, I wanna mention that all of the commands that we use here and the text will be in the notes in the uh, or on the website under guides using Vagrant for Rails development. And those will be the latest versions of these configurations. And this changes a lot, so make sure you take a look there. Now the first thing we need to do is set up Vagrant, and that's going to be two things. The first is going to be Vagrant itself, and the second is going to be VirtualBox. You wanna download uh, whichever of these is for the operating system you're using. So for me, I use Mac OS X, and I will download these two and install them. And when you're done with that, we'll come back to the tutorial to uh, set up our application. Now, once you've got VirtualBox and Vagrant installed, you can install the two plugins we're gonna need to set up uh, Vagrant. So here we're going to type Vagrant plugin install Vagrant-VB guest. And then we're gonna do Vagrant plugin install Vagrant librarian chef-no chef. And this is going to be a version of uh, the Vagrant Librarian Chef plugin that should work on Windows as well. And then once you've got both of these installed, we can dive into our Rails application that we want to use Vagrant with. And I'm going to use one called Landing Page. And then inside of here, you can just type Vagrant init. So this will create the Vagrant file for us. and then we're also going to touch a file called chef file and pay attention to the capital C there because that's important. Um, and now we can open up that chef file and paste in some code. So I'm just going to grab this from the example here and you'll paste that in, save it, and you can do the same thing with the vagrant file. So we'll go grab that from here. Uh, don't worry about overriding everything in there. Feel free to take a look and read about all the options and uh, take a look at their example config. We're going to replace that with ours and it's going to install um, the Ubuntu 14.04 trusty tar version 64-bit. Um, if you want the 32-bit, feel free to change the 64 to your 32-bit. If you know that your uh, operating system on your computer doesn't support that, go right ahead. Uh, we're gonna set it to two gigs of RAM to use for memory, so we have plenty of space. Uh, you're also free to tweak that as much as you like. We're going to take the port 3000 on our computer and forward that over to uh, Vagrant. Now, a few of the other things we've got here is that we're gonna use the aptitude res recipe. We're gonna install Node.js for the asset pipeline. We're gonna use Ruby build to ver build version 2.2.1 of Ruby. Um, it's also going to install the bundler gem. Then RBNV is going to be used to install those. And we're going to also include Vim and MySQL server and client. So we'll be able to uh, build the MySQL gem as well as talk to the MySQL um, uh, server that will run inside of our Vagrant virtual machine. You're free to configure these to maybe be uh, Postgres, for example and uh, do with this as you like. There's plenty you can do with this and uh, take advantage of that as well. Now back in your terminal, you can just run the command vagrant up and you'll be using this every time that you wanna start your vagrant virtual machine to work out of. Now the first time that this happens, it's going to start downloading the Ubuntu uh, Trusty64 ISO. So this is the image of the operating system that it's gonna download. It's already pre-configured for VirtualBox and Vagrant, um, and that's going to be great in the sense that we just download it, and it's pretty much going to be good to go. We'll have to install some things like Ruby on it, but Vagrant knows how to do that. So we just let this command run, 
and it will download it. It won't have to download it in the future once we've got it cached to our hard drive. And once you let this run, as long as there are no errors, you'll be able to SSH into the Vagrant virtual machine. So I'm going to let this run and we'll be back in a few seconds. And we're back. Now that uh, you see the output from Vagrant setting up our virtual machine, you can see if you look at these logs, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens. It sets up MySQL, your user, installs packages, Ruby. Um, all of that will happen and then eventually you should get a bunch of uh, green messages and report handlers complete and chef run complete is the important part here. So you'll see that has finished and uh, once chef is done then basically your virtual machine is all set up. So now anytime you want to uh, work on your Rails application you can jump into your, your Rails folder and you can say vagrant up and we just ran that command and that will make sure that the virtual machine is started. Uh, so we did that already and then after it started you can type vagrant ssh and this will drop you right into a prompt inside of the virtual machine. So this will ssh in for you and you will get the exact same login as you might expect from a virtual server somewhere. Now what you'll want to do is type cd slash vagrant and this is going to be the directory you'll work out of. And if you list the files in here you'll notice that these are actually the exact same files inside my landing page rails app. So where you did vagrant init and vagrant ssh from those uh, exact same files and folders are going to be the ones inside of this slash vagrant folder. So it automatically mounts this from the host into the guest virtual machine for you. And once you're in here and you've gone through the process, you should be able to have the bundle command. If you don't, you can always gem install bundle. Um, but you also have your Ruby version that you specified in the vagrant file. So 2.2.1 is what I have here in mine. We can open that up and you'll see in the chef.json config, um, we've installed the Ruby 221 under the Vagrant user. And then I've also told it to install the bundler gem. So since we've got the bundler gem, we can just run bundle like we normally would inside the Vagrant folder. So this installs all your gems and then you can also run uh, RBM rehash so that any of the executables like the rails executable or rake or annotate or any of those other executables that come from gems are available and that is just a piece of functionality that rbn uh, requires you to do so uh, from here you can just run rails s like normal and you'll see that this will start a rails server and it will listen on port 3000 just like you normally see that and it, this time in your browser if you open up localhost 3000 um, you'll get nothing so now that means we can run bundle just like normal to install all of our gems inside the virtual machine you won't need to install these gems inside your development computer anymore because they can all be self-contained inside the virtual machine. And that means that now we have all the gems, we have everything set up, you can run rake db migrate and all of those database commands here, and you're also able to run your Rails server. Now this one, um, you can run Rails server like normal, but I'm gonna rec recommend you say dash b, and pass in the IP address of 0.0.0.0. Now the reason you want to use 0.0.0.0 is because that's a public facing interface and the way that VirtualBox passes over localhost 3000 in your browser um, to that is going to make sure that a virtual machine connects everything and it listens to that uh, address properly. Now you can see here that we got our Rails application uh, to respond and that means that Vagrant has been fully connected. So we got localhost 3000 but this is actually routing to our virtual machine that Vagrant started for us. So you can take this Vagrant file and the chef file and commit that to your Git repository so that anyone else on your team or you in the future can set up your virtual environment and work uh, with no problems uh, in theory if nothing changes with these uh, recipes from Chef. So if you do run into any issues with Chef, 
Um, please post a note in the comments of what the issue is and maybe if you find a solution, how to fix it. Um, this seems to be changing a lot, so your feedback on kind of all of those things that change would be great, and I can help use that to keep this up to date. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode, and I've got to let you go because I have a Rails application to debug.